Okay, hello everyone. Uh, nice to talk to you guys. And I think it's uh, the first, it's uh, actually my first session as a virtual speaker. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll uh, go back to the normal routine uh, in, in a short while. But uh, for now, we'll continuing with the virtual sessions. So uh, just I would like to uh, share first uh, who am I? I just want to give a brief introduction about myself. So primarily, I'm a software engineer at security AI. I have more than nine years of uh, software, professional software development experience. And with respect to Elasticsearch, uh, I've been working for more than four years now. And I'm also an Elastic Certified Engineer. I did my certification last September, somewhere around. And other than that, uh, some sort of contribution I've done on the Elasticsearch Curator module. That's an open source contribution. Uh, other than that, I like to speak at different technologies, et cetera. So that's a bit of introduction about myself. And the agenda uh, for, you can say today is, is as follows. So we have divided this particular talk into three segments, uh, as you can get an idea from the name itself. It's the first thing generally talks about why search is important in our daily lives and whether this search is a recent problem or this search has been a problem uh, for, for quite some long. We'll just take a look at it. Uh, then we have, uh, we'll take a look at what is what we mean by full text search and what are the associated challenges with respect to uh, full text search and obviously how these challenges are solved uh, in the industry by, by different, uh, by different, you can say, technologies and different technical tools. And then we'll just uh, talk a bit about Elasticsearch, what Elasticsearch is about and how it uh, actually helps in text analysis. And we'll take a look at one of the examples uh, with respect to Elasticsearch. We'll not go into details uh, about, uh, into uh, very details of uh, the text analysis in Elasticsearch because uh, that's, that's certainly a very advanced topic, but we'll share just uh, a basic, some basics of it and we'll go through it. So the first question that comes to us is why search is important. So before answering that question, we'll just take a look at our daily lives, how we spend our daily lives. So I think WhatsApp, uh, everyone uses it a lot. And if you have a large contact list and you want to call someone, so the search bar over here, most of us are familiar with it and have already been using this. Other thing is mailboxes. Uh, so we, uh, all of us use some sort of mailboxes. And uh, if you have some, some, uh, some, you want to filter out emails that have an attachment and whose attachment size exceeds uh, 5 MB or something like that, so we can use uh, various kinds of filters over there and uh, using those filters, uh, again, we can uh, filter out the emails. So that's again, one of the examples. Uh, YouTube, again, uh, since uh, I am actually very much passionate about cricket and these days we are not having cricket anymore. So, Again, watching the previous matches over YouTube, that's one of the one of the hobbies that, that I'm following these days. So, and certainly uh, I think the usage of YouTube has increased uh, across the, the, the entire world in these days. Again, Google is there with us. Google, again, if we are facing any kind of issues, any kind of uh, things that we need to learn, Google, for most of our cases, we like to search on Google and Google typically uh, looks around in its database and uh, returns out the results or whatever matches to the inputted query. Uh, the Raz, it's actually one of the e-commerce store here in Pakistan and uh, 
uh, again uh, if we just want to take a look at the different deals that are available different uh, apparels and and whatever is available we just use we just use the the search bar at the top quite a lot in order to search for the respective thing that we are looking to purchase and So uh, all of these examples, if we have just seen from ranging from the e-commerce store, from the search engine, from mailbox and, uh, a, and a chat uh, engine, a chat messenger service. So all of these, uh, again, uh, if you see search is a fundamental component of all of these components. And these products, I think, uh, whatever examples have been shared, uh, these products have been uh, developed uh, with the efforts of, you can say, several hundreds and thousand hours of engineering efforts that have been involved. And uh, again, uh, many people, they have contributed towards this cause, uh, but uh, in, uh, indirectly, because again, uh, there will be like researchers, scientists in the academia who have been researching on the different kind of novel search algorithms that are optimized and that uh, that returns very efficiently. So I would just like to say thanks to all of those people who have contributed in making our lives easy and comfortable uh, at this particular point. So uh, just paying thanks to those guys, uh, whether they have contributed directly or indirectly. Now the question also arises, these all examples are uh, highly technical in nature, but uh, do, do we think that uh, search is a recent problem uh, with the with increasing data sets or uh, it has existed in in the uh, human history for quite uh, quite a long time so uh, for one example uh, that uh, i think most of us have faced in our lives if is finding a matching pair of socks if they are not uh, keeping the socks tied together so we can easily uh, understand it that uh, Again, if we want to search a matching pair and they are not tight, so as the number of uh, socks increase, the, the difficulty increases uh, in order to find a matching pair in a short time. So again, you have to spend more time uh, looking at each of the, the sock pieces until you find a, a matching one. And similarly, if we see uh, from other, other examples like uh, a book, so uh, if you see there is an index at the back end of the book, uh, some, some might call it as a glossary or some, some appendix, some, some, some other words are being used as well. But uh, if we see the concept of those indexes, so those indexes carries the terminologies with respect to the page numbers at which those uh, terminologies have been used. So this uh, index helps uh, for the readers to quickly uh, refer to that particular section in which the, the terminology was used and it assists the users in, in order to uh, quickly getting to it. And similar concept is used in the, in the database and in the modern world. So if we are, uh, in, in, if uh, you guys uh, are working on any kind of database and you hear the term index, so uh, it's, it's a similar kind of data structure that is created in memory and uh, which actually uh, again against uh, the against the, the the keyword or against the field there is a reference to the corresponding document in the database that is stored as a separate data structure so when we refer to indexing when we refer to creating index over database we are referring to creating a separate data structures that enables us to uh, quickly access those documents. But by the way, this concept of index in books is quite old. Uh, so it's not a recent one and it has been used uh, in, in, in books from the 15th and 16th centuries. And uh, there is a reference of a, of a poem in which an index was used and that was dated to 1593 and that was actually uh, from the Christopher Marlowe's Hero and Lander and uh, it refers 
uh, index in his poetry as therefore even as an index to a book so to his mind was young linder's look so it was that uh, quick for him to to recall some someone's look as as it is to recall a particular section from an index so uh, yep that's it uh, that's it for the search side and moving on next with the full text search and its associated challenges so first question that we have is what we mean by uh, full text search and full text search in a nutshell is a uh, few of the advanced uh, techniques that we use in a database in order to extract out in order to get the relevant content based on you can say uh, smaller chunks of text or you can say phrases of text uh, and, and uh, using those phrases using smaller chunks we can actually uh, access the complete uh, document or the complete section of the text string so so that is what we mean by full text search so in if we are just uh, talking in the database world then uh, again if we have a set of keywords and we want to retrieve uh, the complete record from the database on the basis of selected keywords uh, we we can say that is how full text uh, queries work in the database and there are uh, uh, a few operations that are performed uh, that involves like creating indexes uh, beforehand uh, on the database side so that when the user is querying it that can be quickly retrieved and returned back to the user uh the other question is why full text search is complex and full text search is complex because of a number of uh, fundamental uh, challenges associated with the the use of natural languages so there are you can say uh, different ways in which an idea can be represented in in a particular language and also the way may vary with respect to geography in some geographies uh, uh, some some meanings if for example if i'm using a particular way in in one particular area to convey a message maybe the same message may not be conveyed uh, or may may not be uh, same message may not be in interpreted by the people living in different geographies so uh, one example is uh, a few example is are listed below one is karachi is an industrial hub and most populous city of pakistan so the key idea that it this particular sentence provides is that uh, is about uh, an industrial hub which karachi is and the the population uh, of karachi uh, with respect to other cities in pakistan so these are the two key ideas key messages that are being delivered in this particular sentence now same sentence can also be written as the industrial hub of pakistan is karachi which is pakistan's most populous city and the third one the, uh, in another in other way we can say pakistan's industrial hub is in karachi and it is the most populous city of pakistan so you can see all of these three sentences they are conveying exactly the same idea but uh, the ways are totally different so if we want uh, something to be looked at uh, karachi with respect to uh, its population and its being industrial hub of pakistan so if we are using exact matches on the basis of these queries then perhaps uh, if if i mean we may not be able to retrieve all of these three sentences we may only be able to ret uh, retrieve and return a single sentence back to the user so that's one of the uh, challenges with respect to full text search that same idea can be represented in a number of different ways in a in a particular language the other problem is that not all words are equally significant so the importance of word uh, is different each word is different so if we just uh, analyze the number of different words in the in the sentence which is karachi is the industrial hub and most populous city of pakistan 
so you would find there are many many words which are auxiliary verbs such as the is and uh, those uh, those helping words in order to construct the sentence then we have articles we have prepositions and conjunctions so all of these actually helps in construction of sentences but again if we are just analyzing those sentences uh, as and those words as individuals they don't have any significant meaning but they uh, help uh, in, a, in 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 the construction of sentence and in order to uh, make the meaning out of the sentence the other problem is one word can take on multiple forms we have an idea uh, again if you are talking about english language we have Uh, we have different forms of verb we have you can say present past and future tenses and then again continuous and perfect tenses involved in those words as well so uh, that change, that may change uh, the form of verbs that we are using similarly uh, a, a word can take on uh, take uh, multiple you can say types like for example a word can be can be used as a noun and it may have a different form if it's used as an adjective or if it's used as mm, an adverb or or something like that so if we take examples of two sentences uh, which are given below so karachi is the industrial hub and most populous city of pakistan and the other sentence is karachi is the industrial hub of pakistan with highest population now the populous and population again if we are analyzing it they are uh, coming from same root word but they are taking out different types so again if we are storing out uh, the word exactly then perhaps uh, uh, those two words uh, may mean different for a search engine to return back to the user so so that's also one of the problems associated with full text search there are also uh, many other problems uh, that we may seen and we may see and uh, you guys may also have uh, but we'll restrict uh, our session to these three particular problems and see how these are solved uh, uh, that are uh, needed that are carried out in order to solve these three challenges uh, with related to full text search so there are a uh, few uh, steps and few actions that we can take uh, so full text uh, what we can do is that first step that we can do is tokenizing the text text uh, message that we want to store and by tokenizing we mean we are just uh, splitting out a sentence or a text message into different Uh, word tokens or it can be uh, uh, any set of tokens but uh, if we are using a white space tokenizer that splits on the basis of a white space which is the space uh, uh, tab characters and other one so then what we can do is that we can just uh, split uh, each word as a separate token out from a sentence the the uh, by the way we'll take a look at in detail about the tokenization in the next slides then there are also uh, processes related to creating lexemes and uh, lexemes is just some sort of post processing done on the tokens which are generated and we'll take a, a detailed look later and these lexemes uh, are then stored uh, into you can say uh, uh, into into the systems and then they, they can be Uh, returned back to the to the users uh, on the query time and then there is also a relevance uh, ranking so the more the lexemes match to the users uh, input then uh, the higher the score it gets and the more it is relevant to the search query so uh, getting into the tokenizer so we are just splitting a text into a set of different tokens on the basis of a criteria the criteria may vary uh, so for example if you have uh, an input which is a comma separated value string 
and you want to split it on the basis of a comma character then perhaps uh, the criteria would be based on the 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 comma character uh, it it won't be on the basis of a white space but for in this example if we have a sentence which is karachi is the industrial hub of pakistan and we want to split it on the basis of white spaces so what we did is from the output of the tokenizer process we get the tokens karachi is the industrial hub of pakistan so these are all separate tokens the next step was about creating lexemes so lexeme uh, again uh, there 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 can be a number of different ways of creating lexemes i am just sharing one of the examples over here and these this example particularly involves these three steps and again uh, there there can be some some other steps as well but i am restricting it to the use of these three steps so first is the lower case conversion because again if a sentence is beginning with a with the upper case character and uh, it is it has almost the same uh, meaning uh, with respect to the letters or with respect to the words which uh, begin with lower case character so lower case conversion actually removes the uh, you can say removes the uh, element of differentiating between the two words then stemming stemming is actually getting to the root word so uh, we know that a word can take different forms that is one of the challenges with respect to the full text search so in order to solve it what we do is that we stem and we try to get to the root word so uh, in this example again the same tokens which were generated from the previous example uh, what we have done is that uh, we have done stemming and by stemming uh, what we are doing is the word industry uh, that was used that the word industrial that was used in the uh, the, the previous output from tokenizer it has now stemmed to a root word uh, industry and by the way this ends with i uh, because this is the you can say behavior of a snowball english stemmer and there are various different implementations of stemmers available but for the for example i've used an implementation of snowball english stemmer and by why it ends with i rather than y in this case because if we see different forms of word industry so it can be industries it can be industrialization it can be industrial and again it it, it can be there there can be more there it can be industrialization yeah it can be there can be more uh, forms of the word industry larger number of these forms contain industry with an i uh, because uh, they they are not these words are not ending so that's why they they don't have y at the end so because of that i believe the snowball english stemmer uses uh, the root word that ends with y rather that ends with i rather than y so that's why that's how it stemmed to industry other than that the next step was uh, stopping uh, there are stop words and those words that have uh, lesser importance we call them stop words uh, in 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 full text terminology so we need to eliminate those words out and if we eliminate those words out we would be reducing the number of tokens that will be needed to be stored in the search engine because uh, we we definitely have a choice to storing all of these as well but if we are storing all of these then we have some challenges associated with the storage cost so so but uh, so if we think that uh, we don't want to uh, we if we if we see that our use cases doesn't have uh, any significance of these stop words we can safely eliminate those up so again after elimination the we have we only have you can say four tokens that will be stored out of our tokens of seven uh, that were generated so so these these are again uh, uh, the, the four output tokens that are generated so oh, i think i'll take a look at 
Yeah, by the way, feel free to post any questions that you have on the way. So I'll, I'll respond to them at the end. But yeah, feel free to add your questions uh, as, as we are progressing with the presentation. Okay, so yeah, there, there is one question from uh, about Elasticsearch supporting lexemes by Spanish words. I think there is a Spanish, uh, I'm not actually sure whether it's uh, supported, but there are different uh, languages that are uh, supported by Elasticsearch. And I believe Spanish would be there as well. Uh, because uh, uh, with respect to English language, I've seen that we, we typically use uh, the English language analyzers in Elasticsearch. Um, so, so there definitely will be some, some Spanish analyzer available over there as well. So jumping to the Elasticsearch side, there are a few questions that uh, I have faced in recent years from different people. And these questions are uh, why we use Elasticsearch and why not something else. So I think uh, most important use case for Elasticsearch is, uh, is that wherever we have a search use case where we need to do extensive searching, I think Elasticsearch is, uh, is the best choice that I have seen uh, from my experiences. And if you, if you have the cases where you want to use where you want to search extensively, then Elasticsearch is, is the thing that perhaps you should evaluate. Uh, next question is, is Elasticsearch really a database? Uh, I think that's, uh, that's fundamentally, uh, I, I don't respond it by a yes or no. I would say that uh, it's, it's, it depends on your definition of database. And if you believe and if you, if you think that a database is only uh, only that those particular services that satisfy the asset criteria so if that's the case then perhaps uh, i would say that elasticsearch may not be a database but if you have some some uh, other other definitions of database then perhaps uh, you you just need to evaluate the elasticsearch with respect to your definition so in which particular scenario should we use Elasticsearch? Yeah, again, that's the search use cases where uh, we should be using. And why not using some other NoSQL or relational databases? Because uh, I think the, they don't handle the full text uh, challenges associated uh, and Elasticsearch uh, fundamentally handles this problem very well and uh, that's why uh, it's, it's one of the, the go-to choices when we are actually solving out uh, search problems. So uh, again, Elasticsearch is a real-time distributed search and analytics engine. So if you are searching out on the uh, Elastics website about Elasticsearch, I think this is uh, one of those sentences that you will find on the websites. And by real time, we mean it's it's sort of near real time because there is all uh, there is a refresh interval associated with a particular index, and the value by default is fairly low. It's uh, one second, so it's it's closer to uh, it's near real time engine. It's distributed because there are plenty of you can say add you can add a number of different nodes, and they all join together as a part of cluster, and the cluster can. Uh, consists of several hundreds of nodes and uh, they, they typically uh, operate well. And we have, we have examples of different companies using uh, these giant monster clusters as well. So uh, that, those, those should be fine. And it, it's also called an analytics engine because it doesn't only solve the search problem. We are actually, uh, in this particular slide, we are looking at the search site only but it also solves the analytics problem. So if you want to aggregate, you, you want to find aggregate statistics over the uh, your inputted data, then Elasticsearch also supports a large number of aggregations that are available. And it uses a different data structure for that. Uh, but 
again it's very efficient in order to to if you have use cases where you want to compute analytics uh, in real time so it's also efficient in those cases as well so it's built on top of an apache lucene which is the the search uh, engine which is one of the open source search engines in java and uh, so apache lucene technically solves the the uh, the search problem and for in order to solve the analytics problem i think uh, the the guys they have done some amazing job with respect to uh, developing some some supporting data structures which was uh, i believe solely developed uh, by the contributors uh, to to this for this beautiful uh, tool now coming to the to to few of the properties of elasticsearch so uh, if you have use cases where you want to you want to support transactions uh, so elasticsearch doesn't support transactions that's one thing so if you have a use case in which you have a large number of transaction support i think uh, maybe elasticsearch may not be a good choice in those cases you may have to look at some some other tools uh it and also it's a misconception that uh, whenever uh, we see that we, we we know that elasticsearch is document oriented so elasticsearch would be storing json documents in it so uh, so whenever we see that okay we have a document store uh, then we treat that it would be a schema less uh, implementation or schema less store but that's not the case elasticsearch is not schema less elasticsearch has a flim has a schema but that is flexible so you can say that we we follow a particular schema but uh, it's not completely schema less but it's a flexible schema we can actually uh, develop the schema uh, and we can actually enhance that particular schema as we go on but once a particular schema is created we cannot modify it uh, unless we want to reindex it if we want to reindex it completely so yep uh, again the the same thing so elastic search solves the relevant search problems it solves it uh, very much efficiently and it helps you in computing data analytics on your uh, inputted data or your indexed data in real time so these are the few db ranking db engine rankings of search engines and you can fairly see that elastic search is at the top and by the way this is a logarithmic scale so even if you see a, a minor difference in between uh, elastic search and the 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 other tool but uh, in fact since this is a logarithmic scale if in on linear scale the difference is quite quite large and it's quite significant so moving on to the concept of inverted index uh, which is the basic uh, document structure in elastic search that actually uh, implements the same concept uh, that is implemented in the index of a book so uh, we if we just draw an analogy with it we would see that uh, we have uh, in book we have terms that are mapped to a particular page numbers so in an inverted index what we used to have we have terms and uh, those terms are then mapped to document ids and there are also some some other information stored along with those uh, terms such as the you can have the frequency of how many times the terms have been used you can have uh, postings as well so so these are few things that that are also a part of inverted index so inverted index is created whenever a document is inserted in elastic search so whenever an a document is inserted into elastic search uh, we create an inverted index for it and whenever we are creating inverted index for it we also refer this particular process as indexing so this term indexing is being used quite a lot and we are saying we want to index document so whenever we are using the term index documents we mean we are inserting the document into elastic search and getting its inverted index being created so so this is what by we mean by the term indexing
so this index operations is generally uh, impacted by you can say the refresh interval settings as well so by default it's the setting is one second and it fairly works uh, the default setting but if you have some some other you can say scenarios some other cases in which you want to use then uh, then perhaps you can also uh, try uh, changing those settings uh, this is one of the examples. Uh, I've just copied it uh, from somewhere else. So these are three sentences. So winter is coming, ours is the fury, choice is yours. These are three documents that are inserted. And uh, if we are using a white space tokenizer uh, and if we are using the same, same, same lexemes that we discussed uh, previously, uh, we'll come across uh, this sort of an inverted index and by the way the inverted index uh, is actually sorted and it is arranged in an ascending order so that actually uh, assists in quickly uh, getting to the to the term in in a quick fashion uh, and if, if for example if, if we arrange the data in in, in an ascending uh, order and then if we want to search it and if we for example we are using a binary search or some some uh, some similar sort of search algorithm, then we can search them in n log n computational complexity uh, and so on. So we'll try to take a look at the text analyzers in Elasticsearch. So uh, there are, uh, so the analysis is the NER term named uh, in Elasticsearch and it is the process of actually converting text into tokens, uh, which are then stored into the inverted index uh, for searching. So analysis is a process in which our text is actually split out into tokens. And then uh, again, lexemes are graded out and then they are stored into uh, an inverted index for search. And analysis is performed by uh, analyzer components in Elasticsearch. And uh, there are uh, two types of analyzers. Uh, first is the built-in analyzer. The other one is the custom analyzer. And uh, there are various different types of uh, analyzers available. You can refer to the Elastic documentations in order to uh, go through these. And even you can also create custom analyzers yourself uh, based on your particular criteria. So the anatomy of uh, an Elasticsearch analyzer is that it consists of three fundamental lower level building blocks. And these includes uh, the character filters and character filters might be some, some sort of pre-processing that you need to perform over your data. For example, if you are using some certain words such as ampersand in your sentences and with ampersand, you want to convert it into uh, an end character and an and, and string, you can say. So uh, again, you can uh, do that through a character filter in elastic search analyzers. Then there are tokenizers. Tokenizers are simply, again, splitting out the string into a number of different tokens. And then uh, we, we have token filters. Token filters actually assist you in creating lexemes. So if you want to convert to the lower case, uh, into lower case, tokens you want to eliminate those stoppers you want to stem the tokens then uh, all of these can be uh, defined as uh, at, at the token filters level testing and analyzer there are again Elasticsearch apis Elasticsearch provides an http based uh, interface and in which you can use a simple ap simple restful apis and if you want to test out your analyzers you can simply use the post uh, method and then against it you can just test it in this particular way you can hit the underscore analyze endpoint and you can uh, provide your analyzer again this the standard analyzer is one of the uh, built-in analyzers which are provided by Elasticsearch and against it you can uh, provide your text whatever text you want to be analyzed and tested out and there, there are documentations available uh, if you want to uh, you can uh, visit these documentations by the way these slides will be shared and so i think if you if you want to refer it at a later stage you can do that 
And now uh, going through uh, the examples, one of, and taking example of some real world uh, cases. So uh, by the way, in these examples, the analyzers, uh, the following analyzer configurations are used. So when we are saying the character filters, uh, we are not using any sort of character filters in these examples. The tokenizer is white space tokenizer. So everything would be split into token on the basis of white spaces. The token filters will be uh, lower cased and uh, they would be, the stop words would be eliminated. And with respect to stammer, we would be using the uh, snowballing list stammer here in this case. So uh, this is one of the examples if we see. So we have, you can say, uh, let's say there is a document. There is one document which is inserted and the document is Karachi is an industrial city of Pakistan. Now, based on the output of a white space uh, tokenizer, we would be having uh, these different uh, set of tokens which are generated from the tokenizer. It would be an city industrial is Karachi of in Pakistan. Again, uh, the, the second column consists the document ID and the third column uh, consists of the frequency, how many times the word is used. And these words are arranged in, uh, are sorted out because an inverted index is sorted out. So I have sorted it out for, for ease in visualization. So, uh, once the first document is inserted and it is tokenized, the following tokens would be actually generated at the back end. Now we are inserting another document. The second document is Karachi is the most populated city of Pakistan. So the second document uses uh, the same words, some, some of the similar words that were used in the previous sentence as well. So if the word has already existed in the so uh, again, the associated counts would be increased. The document ID associated with it would be increased. So if you see uh, Karachi, again, we can see the document IDs. Uh, Karachi points to two particular document IDs, one and two, and the frequency has increased to two as well. And same is the case with Pakistan. Same is the case with some of the auxiliary verbs such as is, uh, and same is the case with preposition of, which is one and it is used in both the document one and document two. By the way, this is not the exact sequence of steps that is performed on the back end, but this, these are a few steps that are performed at the back end. So I'm just explaining it in this order for, for, for better understanding and comprehending uh, how it is, it is happening at the back end. Now, if for example, we are converting it to lowercase, now in these cases, you would find that two words, Karachi and Pakistan, earlier they were actually existing as uh, in upper cases, now they are converted into lowercase character. So this is done by the, uh, the correct, uh, by the token filter process of lower casing it. Then uh, getting to uh, doing the stemming process, getting to the root word of so the city, again, from the English snowball stammer, the city gets stemmed to uh, city ending with Y. Industrial stem gets stemmed to industry with Y and population populated gets stemmed to popul. Now, next step is uh, eliminating those step, those words. So now uh, we have city, industry, Karachi, Pakistan, and Popul. These are the words remaining. The other stop words have been eliminated and an inverted index is created. So the final form of inverted index is it consists of only five tokens stored, which is city, industry, Karachi, Pakistan, and Popul. And these all will be stored. So this is done, the, the, this piece of inverted index is created by Elasticsearch uh, after the indexing process. Now, when it comes to search site, so yeah, this is the final thing. Now, when it comes to the search site, if for example, the user searches the string 
Karachi and population. Now the text analysis needs to be performed on the user input string as well. It's not only restricted to the, uh, the input data when we are uh, doing the indexing process, we also have to do text analysis over the user input strings. And when we are doing the text analysis, so Karachi population would, uh, these, this particular string would get split into two tokens, Karachi and population. And after lower case conversion, stemming and Stopford elimination, these two tokens would be generated, which is Karachi and Popul. Now, if we match these two tokens with respect to the inverted index that was created, so we have Karachi, which is matching in two different documents, document one and document two. And we are searching Popul. Popul is population and is actually matching in only second document. So if we see document two is the document that matches uh, that uh, matches both the tokens that were input by the user, whereas document one only matches partially. So document two is more relevant to the user search and document two would have a higher score that will be returned in Elasticsearch uh, query results. Whereas document one uh, would be returned, uh, you can say would have a lower score because it partially matches it. So this is how uh, Elasticsearch, you can say indexing and searches work. So uh, that's it uh, from my side for today's sessions. So I think I'll wait for the questions and try to respond to the questions at this particular point. I think there are two questions in the Q&A function. I don't know if, uh, Junette, you can see those. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so first question is how ranking will be given? I think, yeah. So ranking uh, is uh, given uh, actually on the basis of, uh, again, the, 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 there are also, uh, you can say, uh, uh, ranking is generally uh, returned like so. So the score which is generated at the end, it is generated based on how well the, the you can say, the query, the user input search matches the stored document. So if I just refer to the previous example that is shared, is, so the user search for Karachi and population. And the more the user inputted searches matches in a particular document, the higher it ranks with respect to the uh, returned results. So this is one of the, the criteria that uh, is followed uh, on the scoring side logic in Elasticsearch. And it follows the more it matches, the higher the rank is given, uh, the lesser it matches, the lower the rank it gets. So I believe I've responded to this particular question. So there are other questions. There are analyzers that clears HTML from text. There are analyzers. Uh, I'm not sure about the built-in analyzers. Uh, I believe uh, there, there, there would be some, but I think uh, if, if you have, uh, since HTML generally operates over tags, and if you have uh, different tags, I think you can uh, eliminate uh, those HTML, if you can, uh, there is an option of defining stop words in the uh, custom analyzer side as well, if you want to do, and if you can use those HTML tags as complete stop words, then you can perhaps uh, get those words removed uh, from the indexing process. So, so that is one of the techniques that you can follow. Uh, there, there may be some, some built-in analyzers available for HTML as well. So uh, it would be good to refer to the elastic documentations for that. If there isn't any, then this, the stop word functionality uh, can be used. You can create your own token filters and you can use HTML tags or stop word uh, tokens and get them eliminated while indexing. So I think uh, I've responded to it as well. 
there is one more question if we have saved lexemes data but user wants to search exact word how then how this case can be handled okay so uh as i was mentioning it that's a good question the lexemes uh it 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 also we we also can store again it depends upon our use case whether we want to stem to the root word or not that's that solely depends on our use case it's not a hard and fast requirement so for example uh, there are uh, plenty of use cases around in which elastic search is be elastic search and kibana and the entire uh, elk stack is used for for log processing in those cases when we are actually processing those logs in those cases uh, technically we don't want to uh, create out uh, we don't want to get to the root words we only uh, try to get to the root words when we are actually processing uh, english language and we want to uh, cater out a request uh, uh, because same idea can be represented in a number of different ways and same idea uh, can be uh, can same word can take different form so if we want to search for, we have a use case in which we want to search exact word then we can completely eliminate that particular process we can simply use a standard analyzer which is the built in built in you can say analyzer which is available and this particular analyzer is used the, the standard built in analyzer is used uh, on, it, it operates on the basis of you can say uh, uh tokenizing on the basis of white spaces as well as some some special characters as well such as uh, hyphens used in compound words uh, and and stuff like that so you can uh, use a standard analyzer uh, for those kind of things also you can use on one particular uh, field in elastic search you can use multiple analyzers as well so you can create you can say different uh different you can call it as uh, different separate subfields which are relying on different analyzers and uh, that thing can be used as well so i hope ashish i have responded uh, to to your questions so let me know if if that's fine okay cool I think another question came in uh, through the Q and A from Santosh. Okay, yeah, Santosh, do I have to create my own analyzer for sentiment analysis? Uh, I I would say that uh, just take a look around for the analyzers. Uh, I haven't done the sentiment analysis. for for any case in the past i don't have much experience with this but uh, if if uh, if you want to do sentiment analysis and uh, you just take a look around uh, the available analyzers uh, that, that that are available with you now in sentiment analysis i think uh, uh, the 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 stop words typically have uh, special meanings like for example if we have not if we are negating a sentence then uh the not word will have uh, an extreme that not word will all be extremely important because it is completely changing the meaning it is actually completely oppositing the meaning so uh, those words are technically very important and same is the same is the case that maybe conjunctions uh, they they also play a higher role because uh, if, if there are a number of uh, different criteria specified if you are connecting two sentences so so the conjunction plays a very important role so eliminating those out may not be uh, a, a good idea so uh, i think if if there isn't any built in available uh, uh, so so the analyzer that you need to use perhaps in those case would be a standard analyzer or white space analyzer or if something else is available uh, in 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 the built in analyzers available you can definitely take a look at those uh, but in my opinion 
the standard analyzer should be used for those cases and then handling the sentiments is generally is typically done on the application side yourself so so the standard analyzer will ensure that you are not losing out those important uh, stop words which are very important for sentiment analysis like not and conjunctions uh, etc hope santosh i have uh, answered to your question okay cool yep i, I don't see any other open questions uh, ning uh, am i correct yeah uh, so if there's no more questions i think we can close the session um so like what junet mentioned in the session uh, we will be sharing the recording and the slides after um after this session wraps up uh, it will be sent to the email email address that you use to register um for this session and the recording will also be uploaded um to the elastic youtube meetup playlist so i've just dropped that link in the chat um and you can also check out um the videos that we have uploaded there um so i guess apart from that i don't have anything else to share with the group um but you can always check our virtual meetup group for the next um sessions and really thank you juna for sharing your presentation today um i hope everyone learned something um and thank you all for attending